Hello and welcome. It's 2023 and today we're going to take a look at what do you need to fly online using X-Plane 12. Fly online, let's uh, be, get this right out of the way, we're talking VATSIM. Now, in my opinion, VATSIM, the, the name sounds terrible. It sounds like something you'd stick in a vacuum cleaner, but it actually stands for Virtual Aviation Traffic Simulation or Simulated. This uh, VATSIM network's been around for well over a decade at this point, and uh, I do want to emphasize that there is more than one online multiplayer type server. VATSIM happens to be the one that's perhaps the most realistic. It's free to use. There's uh, another big one. I say big, it's nowhere near as big as VATSIM, but it's big in the sense that you've got to pay. But uh, on that server, it's more for people who are looking for real world pilot training, but using it from a simulator because obviously it's cheaper. And then, of course, you've got other options that are just basically for a group of people to log on together that want to mess around and don't really care. Jot for the rules. Be warned, VATSIM is all about the rules. Do not burn your account. And by that, what I mean is if you're a teenager and you're coming up and you think, I'm going to log into this network and when everyone's trying to do it right, I'm just going to fly in the way and screw it all up for everyone. That'll be the last time that you log on. And then two, three, five years later, you're going to think, I really want to have a go on that VATSIM thing. And I've spent all this money on the joystick and the flight simulators and whatnot, but they're not letting me on. So do not burn your account. Now, I'm aware some people got the attention span of a goldfish and they're not going to uh, want to see uh, an image more than 10 seconds. We probably already lost those, but just in case that we haven't here, take a look at this. This here, X-Plane 12, I'm happen to be flying in the 7-4 here. Do not fly like this on VATSIM. It will be the first and last time uh, that you log in. If you want to fly like this, go solo on one of the missions where you can mess around. Uh, yeah, so don't expect... D don't confuse VATSIM with this online multiplayer thing where a group of people just get together and fly around and somebody pretends to play the tower and they're going to say clear for takeoff and do I have permission to take off? No, yeah, you know, it's not like that. If you hear real world air traffic control communications is exactly the same on VATSIM. There is not very much patience for people uh, that uh, don't go by the rules. So if you don't know what the rules are or what the communications is, do look that up uh, before connecting or just connect and have a listen. And again, that's perhaps one of the uh, biggest pieces of advice then that anybody will give you. All right, then back to the imagery here. Before we get into uh, exactly what button do I click on to connect? Because there is no one button. There's a whole host of them. What I want to do, and this is what I feel is missing with a lot of videos that uh, describe this sort of thing is how the entire thing sort of fits together so that everybody understands. Again, if somebody already knows everything, they can say, oh, you click this, click this, click this. But for somebody who's new, you're going to be thinking, well, why am I even clicking this thing? Um, so let's get on into that. And so let's uh, get on to the first slide here that I've prepared. I've actually prepared a bunch of them because I've come in... Uh actually spent two hours putting this video together even though I am filming it live so I just do hope it works out okay so you start with your PC all right that's obvious uh, some people may be using a Mac I unfortunately can offer no advice to a Mac other than you're paying twice as much for something that's half as good let's leave that one there all right so you're starting off with your PC here got some imagery there nothing too complex about that again you know, gaming computers, you know, everything moves on. Some people think, well, I only had this, got this PC five years ago and the guy in the shop told me it was one of the best that you could get. You know, you're going to have to use your judgment there. Look around online for a bit as to what is and isn't, you know, a good gaming machine. Not that you need the highest end at all by any stretch to play X-Plane. Um, but if you got something that was... Uh, <laughs> That, that that was siphoned onto you five years ago. Uh, be prepared potentially to be a little bit disappointed. It just depends. All right, on from that, obviously, onto your PC, connect to your peripherals. Of course, we're talking about joysticks, rudder pedals, as well as things like your monitors, keyboard and mouse, uh, your throttles, you know, if you've got HOTAS, your steering wheels, um, on, on and on and on, you know, you've got those little boxes that you can buy uh, that will tune in your radio frequencies and so on. And yeah, so there we go. 
Don't try fly online with just a keyboard and mouse. I've heard so many times people say, oh, I'm just using a keyboard and mouse. And I think, oh my goodness, you know, I would have more fun tipping acid over my crotch. All right. The PC then connects to the web. Yeah, the internet, your internet connection, whether it's uh, broadband, fiber, whatever. Hopefully nobody's still on dial-up. I'm aware there are some people ways off where uh, dial-up, don't even bother. Broadband, you know, make sure you've got a reliable connection. Um, usually if you've got fiber, that's going to be the case. But some people, they use Wi-Fi at home. Obviously, that's fine. Uh, if you've got a gaming setup, and especially if you're going to be doing any sort of streaming or anything, Wi-Fi is the curse. And what happens is, if you do a sort of a speed test with Wi-Fi, it's going to say everything's fine. And that's because it is. It's nice and fast. As soon as you start running more and more data through that Wi-Fi connection, it's going to get more and more clogged up. The more clogged up, clogged up it gets, the more times it's going to say, hang on, I didn't get that bit. Can you send that bit again? And when you've got lots of data going through Wi-Fi and you've got these constant little error messages, again, because it's a radio frequency at the end of the day, it's trying to shove more and more stuff through it. Uh, every time it, it makes a mistake, it's going to say, can I have it again? Can I have it again? And this is why you get people that, oh, my internet's fine when I was browsing earlier. Yeah, it will be. But as soon as you again start pumping more and more data through, that connection is going to get ever increasingly unreliable. You're going to have drops out. You can have lag spikes, all the rest of it. So I would suggest... If possible, either using a cable that connects right into your router or if you have to use Wi-Fi, don't be across the other side of a massive mansion with thick walls. Even if you can, check your email uh, with that. All right, little connection here and, you know, little, little, little joke there. Who I don't know who remembers that news article years ago. And what had happened is somebody had done this meme uh, with the Apple iPhone and they'd said, oh, if you put your Apple iPhone into a microwave, it makes it waterproof. And this news article had, had highlighted this little silly meme because there'd been a bunch of people that had actually gone and done it. And of course, uh, the iPhone <laughs> didn't work at all, let alone make it waterproof. Um, yeah, just, uh, you know, little FYI. If all you have to do is stick something in the microwave to make it waterproof, don't you think the manufacturer A would have done it and then B said, oh, this thing's waterproof. Think on before you just... Uh... All right, on from that. We've now got the connections. Next thing, of course, you've got uh, your Microsoft Windows uh, plugged into your PC there and uh, decided to have a bit of a bash here. Usually that's going to be Windows 10 or 11 these days, and I'm doing this early 2023. Of course, if you've got Windows uh, 10... Uh, you know, you've got your free upgrade uh, to Windows 11 all the time. I'm still one of the diads hanging on to Windows 10 just because everything works fine. And uh, yeah, I'm just holding off. And a little joke there, you know, man's seen using an older version of Windows. I hope somebody somewhere finds that funny. Otherwise, it was a waste of time me even trying to put that in. All right, on from that, you've got X-Plane 12. Clearly, this is running through Microsoft Windows, which is running through your PC. Hopefully this image is starting to make sense. And of course, x 12, the main two places to get that from are either to buy it from Steam or, derive, or buy it direct from x .com. Again, x .com are the people who actually make x -Plane. You know, your Steve Austin type guys and his team. x-plane.org is a third party, if you like, online shop that sells uh, stuff, including a whole bunch of modules to do with x -Plane. Uh, just to make that little distinction there for those who are maybe new. There is about 5,000 reasons, maybe six, not to go out and download a dodgy copy either of x or anything else. I'm just going to cover one of those reasons here and now. And I'm not even sure if x 12 is available dodgy and if it works. But I'm just going to say, word to the wise here, if you download dodgy software, expect A, that your passwords are going to start randomly appearing online and you're going to get all these notifications, and B expect that one day you can log in and go hang on why is my processor maxed out i'm not even doing anything and it says it's at 99 percent and my graphics card and there's all this heat coming out and i'm not even doing it expect that to be the case again there is of course one advantage to downloading it and that's of course you get to assuming that it is available you get to use it for free but uh, everything else is a disadvantage and uh majorly so don't just don't it's not where you know if you're a five-year-old Oh, sorry, if you're a 10 and you've got no money and it's that or nothing, 
you know, I can't say what to do. I can't give you any advice. For, for everyone else, just don't do it. It's not worth it. Trust me. All right, next thing, of course, you've got your modules. Now, by modules, we're talking about aircraft that plug into X-Plane. We're talking about airports, liveries, uh, you know, your paintworks, your sceneries, your plugins, and so on and so forth. Notice how that plugs in. Now, someone's going to say, well, what's this got to do with flying online? Well, we're rapidly getting there. Of course, we've got plugins as well. And that's what we're just talking about by, you know, plugins modules. Plugins are things like, almost like utilities, little things that run in the background that do very specific jobs. One of those I strongly recommend to get is Avitab. It's completely for free. You get it from xplane.org. I'm going to just put the uh, text on there, Avitab, pronounced like that. It's the little tablet thing that you see, Pat, if you've seen any videos in real world made in the last 10, 15 years or so, you'll see Pilot Copilot, you see all the instrumentation and whatnot in front of them, and off to the side by the window, you'll see this tablet basically uh, st usually stuck onto the side of the window or, or in that general area. That tablet, of course, has all the old paper charts that used to be in electronic form. That's what this Avitab is. Again, completely for free. This is, I'm going to call it 100% essential if you want to fly online. And again, so it's free. There's no reason why not to. Because when you fly online, your VATSIM people are going to tell you, hey, go here, go here, or, or, or follow this approach plate, follow that uh, SID on the way up, whatever. And you're going to be completely lost without the ability to look at what it is they've just told you to do. The way that you look it up is uh, in-game is using Avitab, of course, you've got, uh, you can use your internet browser to look it up when you're not in game, but it breaks your immersion a bit. If you've got a tab out of game to load up Google to then, ta you see what I'm saying? So get Avitab. Uh, one of the, uh, of course, you've got scenery plugins, you've got aircraft plugins, you've got airport plugins, you, you know, you've got your whole host of things. These, by the way, uh, are, in my opinion, 100% optional. You do not need them with the one, uh, you know, we've said about Avitab, uh, the other one there as well that was just slightly hiding behind is if you haven't already got it, go and get the Zebo. And of course, I'm talking about the Zebo 737. Why? Because it's completely free. As long as you've got your X-Plane, this is completely free. Again, do your search. There's a, you know, if you, if you, if you haven't got this. And it is a fully functional 737. You've got all your FMCs. It's a very, very detailed aircraft. If you think the aircraft that just come with X-Plane 12 are detailed, well, you're in for a shock because let me tell you, they're like the watered-down beginner entry level. The Zebo is sort of where it starts. Now, I'm not saying that the 737 is a particularly difficult aircraft to uh, learn, fly, and master, but it's certainly an upgrade from the Cessnas and even the jets that come with uh, X-Plane 12 as default. The reason why you need a quote-unquote complex aircraft is mainly due to the FMC. Of course, the Airbus calls them the McDo's. I'll uh, just see if I can load one of those up while I'm talking about it. But basically, the FMCs are the thing that you use, or the McDo's if we're talking Airbus, uh, to program in your flight plan into the uh, into the aircraft computer. And FMC literally stands for Flight Management Computer. The McDo, uh, I don't know, something computer unit, I'm guessing. Um, and again, I, I, unfortunately, I... I, uh, can't, uh, I can't, I can't remember the Airbus exact acronym. And unfortunately, yeah, it's going to take me too long to try and uh, insert one of these uh, on, on the go. So I'm not going to waste any more time. But it suffice to say, it's that little computer that rests beside the pilot's right knee or the first officer's left knee. Uh, it used to always just have a green screen, uh, green and, you know, black like the old computers were. The newer ones, obviously, in colour. Um, yeah, so... Again, that comes with the Zebo, and of course, if you're buying professional modules that cost, you know, 50, 60 or more uh, dollars in some cases, they're going to come with the FMC or the equivalent computer uh, usually installed. Obviously, if you're buying some old antiquated World War II thing or some sort of jet fighter, you know, they probably won't have those built in. But you're going to need those again for VATSIM, and if you don't want to spend any money and you want a good module and you don't already get the Zebo. Next thing is X-Pilot. Now, I'm not saying that X-Pilot is the only way to go and connect to VATSIM. I'm saying it's by far the easiest, by far the most popular way of doing it. X-Pilot's a uh, piece of software that basically uh, connect, you know, obviously it runs on your computer on Windows. It hooks into X-Plane 
Uh, and if we take a look here, uh, I pinched this image directly off the X-Plane uh, on VATSIM website. Uh, sorry, X-Pilot on the VATSIM website. Again, X-Pilot is the piece of software that connects between the two. And I'm trying, I'm trying to uh, graphically show this here. And so if you like, you've got your PC down at the bottom there that's running X-Plane. X-Plane and your PC connect into X-Pilot. X-Pilot then goes out onto the internet and connects up with VATSIM. This is how you are able to fly online. Again, there is no online multiplayer menu somewhere hidden in the X-Plane menu system. It doesn't exist. You need this third-party piece of software. Now, don't just think, right, that's it. I can end the video. The only thing I need is X-Pilot, and then I can play online. Not as simple as that. Again, this whole thing fits together as a complete package. Uh, so let's move on from that. Finally, now the VATSIM network ex itself. Again, the, uh, the the name that sounds like it would fit nicely into a part on your Hoover at home. Again, the Virtual Aviation Traffic Simulator. Again, been around since uh, probably many teenagers around today before they were even born. So again, this is a long time thing. I don't want to put an exact time on it. But you can see there that they're basically uh, supporting three separate simulators. Prepared 3D. Microsoft Flight Sim, and they've said X-Plane 11. It's uh, uh, clearly X-Plane 12 as well. Um, you may ar argue that they will put that there once uh, X-Plane 12 comes out of beta. I'm going to guess that's probably the case. But in any ways, uh, X-Plane 12 been out for that long now. Uh, if, you, if you're hanging on for whatever reason before getting X-Plane 12, but using number 11, I don't understand why. It's not like the price is going to vary or anything like that. And it's uh, maturing pretty well. It certainly was a little bit... Uh, uh, patchy in the very early releases but we're well be uh, we're well we're well past that stage now and again there's no benefit just from waiting around it's not like there's going to be a discount at 50 percent or anything uh, to congratulate you for waiting well after everybody else got it all right let's have a look now how does VATSIM fit in and again uh, once again i've tried to uh, show this in the way um so you imagine we've got our x-plane copy there in the top left whether it's 11 or 12 We've got the X Pilot software that we mentioned, and then that uh, hooks into the VATSIM servers online. Somebody on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 uses the V Pilot software, which is very similar to X Pilot, except it's for Flight Sim 2020. And of course, that hooks into VATSIM as well. And then finally, you've got Prepared 3D, uh, which is uh, by far the oldest and least used of those options. Uh, I remember getting prepared years ago. Um, of course was the uh, extent basically prepared 3d was what flight sim x was there i think it was lockheed martin bought flight sim x in in the state that it was in and then decided to continue using that for sort of military istic training purposes i guess and then they had the, like this division that was selling off uh, part of this uh, onto the uh, flight sim community uh, but for tax and whatnot purposes, could not class it as a game. And so you would never see this uh, listed anywhere as a game. It would be seen as some sort of software training package kind of thing. Either way, V Pilot and that hooks into VATSIM as well. Now, the magic of VATSIM here is that not only does it allow X-Plane users to see Flight Sim aircraft and Flight Sim users to see prepared 3D aircraft and any of the combination thereof, all of those things are also hooked in onto the... ATC screens that we see there at the top. So the ATC controller can see and communicate with anybody on any of those. Assuming, of course, uh, people there are playing, uh, uh, have got their things set up correctly. So carrying on through, of course, so the PC down there to the connection to the web or the internet up on that uh, wiggly green line up to the VATSIM servers. And then those VATSIM servers are clearly connecting on with uh, everybody else. There. And if we take a look at all the other people, I, I was looking for just a, an image of online gamers and I stumbled across this image. I actually attended this event back in, I think it was 2008. It was the, oh, what do they call it? The, oh, it was I, Insomnia, that was it. And then they would always put a number and I think I was uh, Insomnia. It was either 32 or 33 that I intended and it was like over a long weekend. 2,000 people attending. What was magic was at the end of it. Uh, not, magic's not the right word, but at the end of it, yeah, I remember the guy, you know, sort of speaking to everyone. And by the way, it wasn't just the people you see here. There was rooms off to the side. 
Uh, I was in one of those off to the side, but we had to come through here. And he said at the end of it, despite having 2,000 people, so that's 2,000 computers. Of course, you, you brought your own computer and everything along to this event. At the end of it, there was only one theft reported for the entire thing, and it was uh, somebody's somebody's laptop. Um, so I think for a thing with 2,000 people and computers and for only one of them to go missing uh, was, was pretty good. Anyway, uh, slightly off topic. Uh, moving on now. So what's the next thing that you're going to need? is a flight plan you see that there now your flight plan clearly that goes into x plane 12 that's going to tell you you know where you're going and also VATSIM need a copy of that flight plan because clearly the controllers on VATSIM need to know where you're going so that they can clear you off into the right uh, direction and they know sort of what height and speed and aircraft and everything else uh, that you intend on using and um, so in the real world think of this much like the flight plan is going to be given to the captain in the cockpit so that would be you know, flight plan to X Plane 12, as well as the flight plan is going to be cleared through air traffic control. So if you if you imagine that line there, to Vatsim being the same there. So where do you get the flight plan from? Well, first we'll have a little look at what it looks like. I'm sure many of you have seen it, but this might uh, also be new to some people. At first glance, this looks like a random mixture of letters and numbers, and and uh, and you know, if you're completely new to flying online. You're going to have to be able to decrypt at least half of this. Now, there's going to be things off to the side that won't matter so much. For example, we see there the fuel binder, uh, the fuel bias M12.0. Whether you understand what that means or not doesn't really matter. Uh, the key things, of course, being your air, airports departures, which is at the top left there, Kennedy International, which is a uh, KJFK, in this case towards uh, Chicago Air International or KORD. Of course, there's other things like your fuel, your times. Um, you see there you've got about a third of the way down. You've got uh, FL steps, KJFK slash 0360. And that's just telling you you're going to be flying at 36,000 feet. Again, so some of this you need to know, but not all of it. Don't worry about it. And there's plenty of tutorials online. So where do you get this thing from? Uh, sure, you could knock yourself out spending about a week typing all that up. And again, there's about 20 or 30 pages in the flight plan. Or you can use this tool here. I've boxed it in white. Simbrief. Now, simbrief.com is a website. It is uh, free to use. Like, so far, everything here is free, aside from the X-Plane 12 game itself. Uh, perhaps should have mentioned that already. Uh, Simbrief is now different. Uh, just give me uh, two seconds. And so if you want to search the Simbrief, it's uh, simbrief.com or just Google it. I'm sure it'll be the first uh, page that comes up. That's going to take you to a website that looks like this. If you found this, you've got the right one. It says there is by Navigraph and we'll take a little look at Navigraph in a minute. Uh, Navigraph, by the way, uh, completely free. Uh, no, sorry. Simbrief completely free to use. Navigraph is not. Uh, Navigraph bought up Simbrief, I'm wanting to say 12, 18 months ago, something like that. As part of their agreement to buy it was to maintain it free uh, free to use for everybody else. Um, we'll again, we'll take a little look at the difference between the two. But suffice to say, Simbrief is the site that you need that's going to churn out if I just come back this flight plan here. And again, it's going to do that completely for free. And it essentially needs three pieces uh, of information to do that. And that is where you're going from, where you're going to, and what plane are you in. Moving on then, we've got this amazing piece of software, Sim Toolkit Pro, that is also free. And uh, uh, there are people that donate to uh, Sim Toolkit Pro, the developers. Um, so I guess you could, they claim that's why it's uh, free for everybody else. Really, really nice piece of software. And I'm going to take a little closer look at that again, again to get it, just uh, do a search for Sim Toolkit Pro and download it. And so when you first run it, assuming you've set it up right of course uh, you're going to be presented with a screen like this that you can zoom in and out of using your mouse this is uh, the uh, the live map of course i took a screenshot here it's just going to show you a brief overlay of all of that sim controllers uh, that run in this time um, now there are a bunch more in europe that are you know, truncated that are hidden but if you were to zoom in you'd see a bunch more in europe and i know because uh, uh, i zoomed in shortly after this screenshot was taken you've got a uh, You've got a, a large sector there in the Atlantic NAT. That's for your uh, North Atlantic uh, controller there. And of course, these controllers come on and off it in their own way, just like you are going to come on and off to fly a plane in your own way. 
Um, so it's not like uh, these people are paid or they're sat there nine to five. Uh, they're just coming on uh, fancying it uh, like you do. Now they are trained, so it's not like anybody can play controller. Uh, if you want to be controller, you've got to go through the VATSIM training thing and pass exams and so on and so forth. And so you can rest assured if you if you hit up any of these on frequency, they're going to know what they're doing. Simbrief as well has the dispatch software. So you remember me saying you needed to know where you're going from and to. We'll take a look there. Flight route on the left. Top left box says your departure. Uh, next to that is where you're going to. And then aircraft. So the aircraft can be any or really you're going to pick the ones that you've got. And you can, of course, uh, keep a track of all your aircraft here so you don't got to search through the exhaustive list. Because it's like, I don't know, there's well over 100 different types of aircraft that are on file there. And um, so you just want to uh, add in the aircraft that you've got onto your fleet. You see, I've done that there. Um, in any case, coming back to that. You also got the ability to create VFR flight plans uh, on Simbrief. Uh, the difference between IFR and VFR, I mean, we could go into it forever. But, you know, in real world, you learn how to fly. It's sort of a VFR comes with it, your visual flight rules. In other words, you're looking out the window and you're flying around using what you can see. That means you're not allowed to fly when it's low visibility, when it's nighttime or anything like an airliner, because airliners never fly visually i mean sometimes they may come in for a landing visually but it's still on an ifr so ifr is your instrument flight rules and all that that means is you're going to get a flight plan i mean there's it means a lot more than this but in in terms of what we need to understand it means you're going to get a flight plan that says i'm going from this airport to that airport but i'm going to do it following these routes and it's going to have these uh, invisible waypoints in the sky you know your air corridors and stuff like that that's going to take you from a to b that published prescribed route is your ifr your instrument flight rules if you're going to do that visually it, it would be impossible to fly visually to invisible waypoints in the sky because clearly you couldn't see them and um, there's a bunch more differences but uh suffice to say on vatsim you need your ifr if you're going to do your airliner stuff and when it's busy they insist on it if you fancy flying around with a little cessna somewhere providing the controller's not too busy they'll of course let you do that visually as well Another thing that you can do on Sim Toolkit is take a search for a specific airport that you're interested in. In this case, I've typed in EGAA, which is uh, Belfast International in uh, Northern Ireland there. And it's just going to show all real world flights that are departing from that uh, airport in. And it's going to give you the time of day, what day of the week, as well as the airline, what aircraft that they're in. And off to the side, I've zoomed in a bit too far to see. It's also going to tell you how long it's going to take. Of course, you can click on any of these and drop that in and uh, replicate it yourself. It's also going to keep track of all the flights that you do. Um, I've done more than this, but the reason that they're not all on there is simply that you need to have Sim Toolkit running. Um, and I obviously don't have it running all the time. It's just a nice optional thing to have. And they can see the different routes that I've done as well as uh, what aircraft I did it in. And uh, yeah, how long it took. And of course, it's going to top your miles it reckons i've done 41 flights uh total of 67.2 uh, hours and further off to the right again truncated was how many miles that was in total and uh, i can't remember exactly what it was but it, it may have been something like 40,000 miles again we've already looked at that uh, keeping tabs of the different airports so we'll skip through that another thing you can do using sim toolkit pro here is the re real airline operations and so rather than searching for an airport here you can search for an airline I've picked uh, Alba Wings simply because it's a much smaller airline, but it gives you an idea. You can see they're operating entirely out of one airport and just uh, visiting a few places in Western Europe there, um, out of Albania, which uh, kind of makes sense if you look. Never heard of the airline, but uh, that would explain why it's a very small one. Next thing is Navigraph. Now, the reason I've highlighted this one in red is because this is the first thing aside from x 12 that you need to pay for now when i say you need to you don't need navigraph but if you want it you need to pay for it and it's an ongoing uh, subscription that rolls around as far as i'm aware there's no trial or anything like that it's just you, know, you pay for it monthly or annually where you get i think you get quite a, dis a bit of a discount if you pay annually but either way that hooks into simbrief sim toolkit pro as well as explain the reason i've drawn this little arrow uh, towards the uh, plugins there is because it uh, it plugs into all of those although you could argue that's uh, through explain anyway either way 
and let's have a little look at uh, Navigraph for those not familiar. It's it's the paper charts that were replaced in electronic format, um, and it's exact copy of the real world charts. Um, it it has this little disclaimer that says not for flight sim use, and in turn, it's made an awful lot cheaper. But I guarantee you, there'll be people somewhere in the real world flying uh, that use the Navigraph uh, version just because it's so much cheaper to do so. But I'm not. I am gonna put a disclaimer and say there may be an error as well. So don't don't listen to me and then I want to be anyway. On from that. So Navigraph not only having. The ability to load in your route. So in this case, we've got a Frank uh, Manchester uh, to Frankfurt route loaded in. You can see the waypoints there. Not that I generated those waypoints. Those waypoints were given to us by Simbrief, the software we looked at earlier, and loaded here into Navigraph. Now, there are three alternatives to this, or an alternative, um, and that is chartfox.com. Uh, sorry, not chartfox.com. Chartfox, but it's part of vatsim.com uh, but uh, to continue looking here at Navigraph so you can see here again these are real charts so this here being a departure out of uh, Manchester so the so-called SIDS um, on one uh, sorry now this is actually a star into Manchester what yeah this is an arrival into Manchester so so forgive there but uh, and I've got another one here so this is a, a more complex one into Frankfurt and one thing I wanted to demonstrate here, so if you look at the top left there, we've got a waypoint Anuko. So if we follow that all the way down um, to the very lower, you can see it splits off at a point, and I'm going to have to zoom in a bit. It is uh, it is kind of uh, uh, small, but uh, Delta Fox 401. And then if we keep heading down, so not up and across, but down you've got Delta Fox or DF600 at the very bottom there. Now, if you follow that line, all the way up to the end, it says Delta Fox 616. Now, this, again, is your start or your arrival. Now, real life in the controllers, they're going to pull you over at some point. But just keep looking at the very end there, Delta Fox 616. If you move up to the middle where you've got the parallel line and zooming in, and I'm, I realize this is not, uh, but I'm just trying to show at the very middle there, you've got Delta Fox 626. I wish I could... Uh, uh, highlight my mouse uh, on screen but perhaps if I can just uh, see some way of just uh, simply uh, doing this perhaps if I drop in I'm just going to write in the letter O and I'm going to move it into the right place right around there of course I've got it uh, incorrect colour so let's just put in a colour that everybody can see yeah, so this is the thing when you do stuff live sometimes uh, of course it's a fluorescent green but there you can see it right there delta fox uh, 626 and this is where your star transitions onto your uh, approach and there's two aspects to it and that's here so again all these charts are in navigraph but you can get them for free from chart fox the difference is navigraph you can just look them up and search them up and it's really well integrated into the avi tab and everything else to do with explain the chart fox you need to go onto the website type these specific airports in in separately download all the files as pdf and then paste them into your uh, windows explorer uh, folder whichever then you're going to be accessing while you're flying it's a very convoluted roundabout way of doing it but it, it is what i'm just trying to say is it is possible uh, to do it for free um in a, in a very backwards way and then finally of course we've got the taxi routes available to us as well on navigraph and of course you can zoom in and out of these on the fly when you're using avitab uh, to see exactly what letters and numbers are for the runway numbers uh, taxiways and so forth all right next thing is we're going to look at the i've called it the pre pre departure flow and the reason is because of course you've got your pre departure stuff to do this is before you even get to your pre departure stuff uh, just a quick recap here and so first off you're going to choose what planes you want to do it in where you're going from your departure and your arrivals where you're going to you may wish so the, the way that i like to do this is i'll either a look where the weather is interesting uh, so i can do it that way or b i'll look on the 
as we saw there, the Sim Toolkit app, find out where are all the controllers. And I'll just show you this real briefly live. Um, so this right now is live as I'm doing this Sim Toolkit Pro. So you can see here that Central and South UK is completely saturated with controllers uh, down here, EGKK. Uh, so Gatwick especially, we've got Ground, we've got Tower, we've got Atis, we've got Clearance Delivery. Um, and you can see there's a bunch more. Uh, controllers that's going to move us all the way into France now there's a little gap but then it continues on down here a bunch of controllers uh, southern Germany as well as Austria uh, Vienna and so on so you've got pretty much if you were to fly for example from or to uh, this airport here LOWW I believe that is Vienna um, all the way to somewhere like Manchester you can see right now you'd have almost wall-to-wall -wall coverage uh, there would be a little moment between these two points in cruise where you wouldn't have a controller. Um, but for the rest of it, yeah, wall to wall. Um, so you could decide, right, well, I don't want to fly, you know, somewhere, for example, uh, let's pick somewhere over here, for example. Yeah, sure, you could pick these two airports. You could fly online, but you're not going to run into anyone. You're not going to have any controllers, so you may as well not be online. Um, but you may say, well, you know, Gatwick, uh, Paris there looks busy. Of course, Germany is almost always busy. I'm surprised they don't got more center controllers on at this point because uh, we do got a lot of controllers on there uh, already in Germany. Um, and then on from that, you can decide, right, well, I'll go from here to here and then you put that into your flight plan. Next thing is create the flight plan with the above. And again, we've uh, discussed where to do that. You go over to simbrief.com or use sim toolkit and again now just demonstrate real quick how easy this is to do with sim toolkit to come over to flight planning uh, choose which aircraft you want so let's go for the uh, uh let's go for the 320 because that's one that uh, lots of people know so the uh, british airways a320 where are we going from i can type it in long form such as manchester in this case and scroll down till you find the one that you want here we see egcc or of course the ico code uh, short form eddf it's going to suggest some real flights that follow those same routes or you can use your own. You can click here, generate plan, and that's going to give the plan for you. And again, it's going to use SimBrief to do it. Uh, so again, it's just a nice way to tie it together. You've got some optional things here on the right. It will auto complete these if you don't. So for example, uh, alternate, you may wish to manually stipulate one. Let's say EGLL, which just costs you Heathrow. Um, or you may say, well, that's... I only want 50 passengers. Why you do that, I don't know. It, it gives you the amount of passengers up to a random, so the way I found sort of 70, 80, 90% capacity for your given aircraft, but of course you can put in. Same with cargo. Um, time, it usually gives you about half an hour before you've got to leave. If you want to get precise on that, you can manually put a time in the, uh, uh, the standard IK away. So without any colons or anything, uh, for example, uh, 15.30 if you want to go at half three in the afternoon. Um, taxi time, just how much time after pushing out you, you expect to be hanging around before. And again, it's going to auto automatically give you about 20, 30 minutes on that. Depends how busy the airport is. You may wish to extend or tighten that. Doesn't matter if it's not precise. The one thing I would suggest, though, is if you're flying online, uh, the SimBrief gives you fuel that's... Uh, enough for your flight and complies with the minimum legal things but because sometimes that sim especially if you're an event can get very busy on your reserve fuel auto you pick one of these larger numbers accordingly i can't tell you how many people i've seen even live do a flight they've been stuck in a queue waiting engines are started up the fuel is idling away and they get to the runway and they don't have enough left and they basically quit um before they've even got anywhere just because they're running low on fuel um, so yeah, think think about uh, think about how busy you know your departure point is on that. Um, let's come back in uh, over here. So what's the next thing to do? Oops, uh, submit submit your flight plan to VATSIM. If you generate your flight plan using Sim Toolkit, Sim Toolkit or Simbrief.com, there is an option to automatically submit it uh, to VATSIM. I recommend doing that because if you don't. The flight plan uh, form that you've got to fill in at uh, VATSIM yourself is quite long. Um, there's a lot of entry fields that you need to complete, some of which 
may or may not be obvious what to put in and if you're new to it there'll be a lot that aren't obvious uh, such as suffix codes for equipment types and uh, navigation performance stuff again if you get it generated through simbrief it's going to fill all of those in correctly for you based on where you're going from an aircraft and so on uh, so make sure um, at least i would suggest uh, to do it that way uh, finally uh, ensure you have your flight plan to hand so you may have a tablet or a phone uh, over and above what you've got on your computer i'd suggest making use of that or just print it out on a piece of paper or handwrite some of the important points in such as your fuel weights the times uh, important waypoints load up any tools that you're going to use again sim toolkit pro i, I count that as a tool uh, that's not x -plane, it's not VATSIM. it's just a tool that's helpful that ties things together five start x pilot first and then x -plane 12 next it doesn't matter if you start x -plane first and then x pilot point is both of these things need to be running at the same time and then on x pilot you're going to get this little connect button again assuming that you've signed in everything correctly I'm not going to insult you all with showing you which how to search for explain on the internet how to click the download button how to click install i uh, assume everybody knows how to do that without now and if you don't know how to do that this is probably uh, a step too far connect to the vatsim network again through xpilot it won't let you connect until you've loaded explain and you are at an airport somewhere on the ground which obviously makes sense now what you can do because it and i'm sure you've seen people online where they've spawned and someone's there or somebody's spawned into somebody at the gate to get around that if we come over to the live map in sim toolkit again you can zoom all the way in so let's just pick one of these where there's a lot going on for example gatwick if we zoom all the way in here we see we've got the airport layout and if we just give it a few moments it will then load in all the players that are currently connected. Uh, let me just check. I have got that on. Yeah, that's him. Uh, so at some point it will load them in. Let me just check that I've not um, asked them to hide based on being on the ground. I think there is an option to hide people that are on the ground. And this one here being sim toolkit only. Of course, that's going to overlay some aircraft twice that are on VATSIM and SIM Toolkit. All right, so I'm showing you, and it's going to, it's going to take, it for, for some reason, it's going to take uh, too long um, to appear or to load in, it would seem. Let's just try SIM Toolkit. Okay, so here's an example of just one guy who happens to be on SIM Toolkit. For some reason, there is a bit of a delay on getting an update in from VATSIM, but essentially, if we, are, if we did wait... We'd see not just one guy, but we'd see, I don't know, 10, 20, however many uh, are in gate like this guy at Gatwick. So we can see this guy here is at gate 106. And so when you load your X-Plane, you know, don't go at gate 106. And again, there's going to be more gates. Uh, look, so you'll just look for a gate that's free, that's uh, big enough to hold whichever aircraft you're in. I mean, if you're a smaller one, uh, you know, mind that. I mean, 7.3 or whatever, you can pick almost any. If you're a larger one, you're going to look for something like, uh, for instance, gate 25, uh, perhaps this area here. And then that will let you know where you can load in without dropping in on top of anyone. Again, I'm really am surprised uh, we're not seeing the uh, players yet uh, from Vatsim, even though it's ticked. Um, and again, sometimes certain servers are stressed more than others and they limit the refresh. And in this case... Uh, we're limited by quite a lot, so there is that. All right. Uh, and then last uh, uh, but not least, once you are in the game, you're connected to the VATSIM network, you're sat in your uh, X-Plane 12 in whatever plane on the ground, dial in whichever frequency is on the go, and we've seen that. You will have, when you're connected... Um, this little list on the X-Pilot software showing you the nearest towers. Click in one that's suitable. You know, if you see Gatwick, it will say EGKK, you know, because it uses the four letters code. You'll see ground or ATIS or whatever. Tune that in on your radio, turn it up, have a listen, look outside the cockpit, and you'll see other aircraft to verify that you've got a good connection. Clearly, the, uh, the, the software is going to say that you're connected or not, but look outside. If you try and turn your settings up too high and or your frame rate gets too low, the software will risk kicking you out and it will kick you out if it persists. 
and so if you do have a lower frame rate either turn some things off or reduce your settings um or whatever you know some add-ons are really really heavy on the frame rate uh, you may not be able to run too many of those um yeah so do that and that's going to bring us back to the you know to the main thing really which is uh uh, go through all of these which is to say that view this as some sort of an index uh, that one there as a plan and make sure you get all of those bases covered because I could make this video another five hours longer and go into each one of these things specifically and go on and on and on about how to do each of the things but this is going to give you like a contents page. You need to get all of these things sorted. And again, if you don't get the Navigraph one in red, um, you know, make sure that you uh, go look chart Fox and load it through there and get all of the, you know, your plans in ahead of time. That isn't to say you can't use it through the Avitab, the downloaded PDFs, because Avitab is very good at dis displaying PDF files in the cockpit. And with that, uh, yeah, make sure, make go through all of these things. Make sure you get them all check, checked off. And if any of them you are stuck on, that is the one thing to search for specifically. And then come back to this list. And once you've got them all tech, uh, checked off, you'll be good to go. So until then, take care. And wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Bye bye.